This morning, the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, told viewers this. We need to uh, tell the truth. That's what the British people expect of us. And then promptly followed it up with this. And the CEO of Dover Port has said the difference of living in a post-Brexit environment means that every passport needs to be checked. Do we need to, after Brexit, just get used to this happening at busy periods? No, I don't think that's fair to say this has been, uh, you know, an adverse effect of Brexit. By now, even Larry the Cat knows that because of the hard Brexit inflicted on the country by the Conservative government, millions of UK citizens have been robbed of freedom of movement between and within member countries of the EU. His former Home Secretary, Priti Patel, delivering the good news to an ecstatic Tory party conference. I have a particular responsibility when it comes to taking back control. It is to end the free movement of people once and for all. Because of the hard Brexit championed by the Home Secretary herself, it now takes longer for British citizens to be processed at airports and other immigration points. That's because the government has asked for us to be treated as third country nationals and asked for tougher checks. It means the government itself has inflicted additional delays on UK travellers. In fact, ending freedom of movement for millions of UK citizens, again championed by the Home Secretary, has actually made it harder for us to leave our own country, as travel expert Simon Calder explains. The big problem with coaches is that, well, as you will know, after Brexit, we asked for um, tougher checks. So when you turn up at Dover, previously you just sort of waved the passport out of the window and that would be fine. Now um, we asked to be treated as third country nationals. So an officer is supposed to go through the uh, passport, checking all your stamps. Um, they then need to stamp the passport themselves. And that takes much, much longer than it did previously. Multiply that by 50. 50 or 60 people on board a coach and you get delays and there is nothing in the short term that is going to change that I'm afraid. No, I don't think that's fair to say this has been uh, you know, an adverse effect of Brexit. Ever get the impression this government is taking us all for fools? Here's more from travel expert Simon Calder. He asked um, after Brexit to the democratic vote to leave the European Union, we said we want an EU hard border in Kent. In fact, we've got two. We've got one at uh, Dover and another one along the coast at Folkestone. Um, so that was something that we asked for. We then said we want to be treated as third country nationals with all the stamping that goes with it. And Anybody who knows Dover, and we've seen some of the pictures there, will know it's very, very constrained. It's beneath the white cliffs of Dover. It was never built on the basis that we would need to have these rigorous checks. So who do we believe? The travel experts and what we witness with our own eyes, or a government that lies about practically everything? The issue of port delays was also raised with the Home Secretary by the BBC's Laura Kunzberg. First of all, let's talk about a pressing issue for lots of people who are just trying to have an Easter holiday. We know there are all sorts of queues and delays at Dover. But the BBC failed to point out to viewers the link with Brexit. OK, let's talk about something else. Imagine the shock when the BBC finds out the Conservative government has robbed millions of UK citizens of freedom of movement and it'll fall off its chair when it finds out the government has asked for us to be treated as third country nationals and asked for tougher checks. And it's going to get much worse, as travel expert Simon Calder again explains. I'm afraid things are only going to get worse because coming along possibly by the end of the year, probably actually 2024, is again something else we know about because we were involved in developing it, the entry exit system for the EU. So everyone on in those cars on, on those coaches is going to have to be fingerprinted and have a facial biometric taken. So the longer term solution is simply going to be to do exactly what they've done at London St Pancras International uh, Rail Station, Eurostar trains. They have cut the capacity. So there are simply um, hundreds of empty seats leaving on every train in the morning from uh, London St Pancras because there is not physically space to process the passengers. Um, and I think we will see something similar at Dover. We will see either mandatory controls on the number of coaches and in summer on the number of cars, um, or it will be a kind of informal thing that will be regulated by the port. But um, it's a grim old situation. No, I don't think that's fair to say this has been uh, you know, an adverse effect of Brexit. Never underestimate just how thick this government thinks we all are.